Okay. Yeah, so the, yeah, your final, final step, when you know you have everything done in the background you wanna do, you're going to start by carefully peeling up your tape and and your tape, your paper might tear a little bit. Like, see, I'm pulling up a little bit of paper with this. Let me on zoom here. There we go. So your paper might tear up, just pull a little bit. That is okay, as long as it doesn't get into like a super huge tear. If it does, what I recommend doing is starting from the other end of that tape, which in this case is on the back, and pulling in the other direction. Let me see if I can make it tear. Nope, not on that one. Okay, so you wanna pull from the other direction. You just gotta get it started. And if your tape might leak a little bit. That's okay if you remember the examples that I showed. Most of them actually have some leaks. Oh, see, this is starting to tear really badly here. And so what I'm going to do is move to the other end of the tape and peel this way. And if I end up with like a little um, flappy bit like this, what I can do when I'm all done is just take a glue stick, my glue stick and stick it back down. Um, having this like sort of slightly torn texture on your paper is not ooh, this is really tearing. Um, is not going to be the end of the world. It mo again, most of them have it. And when you add in your details, it doesn't matter. So let me get the last little bit torn off on this tree. Here we go. So you're going to end up with something kind of like that. You got a tree. Then you're going to take your brush and we want a pretty dry brush for this. Um, in fact, the technique we're doing is called dry brush. So all along, I've probably been telling you, add more water, add more water, use more water to make it spread out. Here, you're gonna use less water. Your first step you're gonna do, and I'm gonna use the flat edge of my brush, maybe even just the little corner. And I'm gonna do a quick, I mean, just quick outline of my tree. And if it's kind of irregular, that's okay, because remember, nature, not perfectly regular and smooth. And then I'm going, so I do that. My lines, they're not all even, that's okay. In fact, that's a good thing. I might get some like scratchiness because there's not very much water on my brush. Again, that is not just not wrong, it is okay and a good thing. Just paint right over that part, I'm gonna have to stick back down later. Okay, so I've got my outline, check. Now I'm going to add those details on the trees, it's like that peely bark. And the way I do that is I just Again, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. I'm holding it so it's like horizontal. And I just kind of start pulling stripes across. You want your stripes to mostly be on one side of the tree. And reload my brush a little bit. Ah, that's a great question. So how am I gonna do this if it's doubled? Yep, I just start, I just keep it on the same side. You kind of want your lines to be sort of irregular. If it looks really patterny, sometimes, well, sometimes it looks like zebra legs. Right. So I've got that. And then what I'm going to do is probably add in just a few coming from the other side. And I've, I did the math yesterday. I've actually done this painting about 80 times. <laughs> so, uh-huh. I've been, okay. So 
you do that on all of your trees and that's your last step. Um, and this kind of covers a whole host of things that you might feel were mistakes on the other one. Like if your tape leaked, all of a sudden it's not super noticeable that your tape leaked. You know, if you have stuff in your background you didn't really like, Again, leaky tape, leaky tape. It's all okay that that happens. It's gonna happen. Um, for me too. So this one, you know, what's gonna happen here is you've created, because this is the most high contrast area of your painting, you have black next to white. That becomes your focal point. And so that's what your eyes go to. And you do the rest of your trees. You should probably put your artist's signature in the corner and then you're all done.